A couple sues the city of Portland after they were assaulted at a public beach. There's a lot of panic and anxiety that I have that I never had before. Why they say their injuries could have been prevented. And it makes you look, let's say, wise beyond your years. But is a popular new app also handing over your private info to the Russians? We verify. And an alert tonight about a detox tea that celebrity influencers are being paid to advertise on social media. They were like, stop drinking this tea right now. KGW News at 6 starts now. And we are going to start with that Call Kristen investigation into a dietary supplement. A lot of celebrities are getting paid some really big money to try and then convince you to buy. In this case, it's detox teas. Companies are paying celebrities like the Kardashians and Cardi B to market this stuff all over their Instagram pages, saying it will help you lose weight. KGW investigator Kristen Severance talked to somebody who actually tried it and health experts who say these detox teas can actually be dangerous. If you search the hashtag detox tea on Instagram, you'll find more than 800,000 posts. There are dozens of brands. Everyone from the Kardashians to Grammy winner Cardi B have acknowledged they're paid to advertise the dietary supplement. And I lost a little bit more weight. Than there are before and after pictures all over the place. Portland based writer Lizzie Acker took her own tongue in cheek picture before trying the Kylie Jenner promoted skinny mint tea. A lot of these influencers said it made them less bloated and, you know, their tummies flat. Lizzie now works for the Oregonian and Oregon Live. <laughs> I'm pregnant right now. I'm like, but you know, my tummy is super flat. But tried the tea <laughs> as part of her column Lady Things when she worked for Willamette Week a yeah, few so years ago. I, all I knew was that it was detox tea, whichever, whatever that means. She drank a tea in the morning and a tea at night. They said it would be a light um, laxative effect. There could be a light laxative effect. It was not a light effect, let me say that. <laughs> it was, I mean, it's a laxative tea, is what it is. It was like, oh, okay, so my body is expelling everything inside of it. After a few days on the product, she felt dehydrated, but something else scared her into stopping. An email from a doctor she had contacted for her story. They were like, stop drinking this tea right now. You know, we don't. It's not regulated by the FDA. They have no idea what's in it. They're absolutely not a magic bullet. OHSU dietitian Carol DeFrancesco says you don't need a tea to detox your body. Every time you go to the bathroom, you're detoxing. Every time you get a good night's sleep, you're detoxing. Every time you exercise, you're 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 improving your health, you're detoxing. While Every she says the ingredients thought, can be dangerous. Actually, some can have stimulants, laxatives, diuretics, all those things can act like medicines that are that are potentially very harmful for the body. Her bigger concern, dietary supplements, including detox teas, are not regulated by the FDA. Their nutrition products can be contaminated with things that we don't even know about, and they can be really, really harmful. Senator Richard Blumenthal recently asked the FTC to, quote, investigate these products misleading celebrity-backed predatory claims that make false promises of healthy weight loss to young adults. It's one of those things where it's too good to be true. And beyond that, they could be harmful. And that's, that's a, a really big concern. We did reach out to Skinny Mint, the company that makes the tea that Lizzie tried, but they did not return our request for a comment. Back to you. And you can call Kristen Severance if you have something that you would like her to investigate at 503-226-5041, or you can email callkristen at kgw.com. A Portland couple was brutally attacked on a Portland beach, and now they are suing the city. What they're saying is, is that police didn't do enough to remove the homeless person behind this attack. Let's go to KGW's Devin Haskins, who's live in southeast Portland. We just sat down with a couple that was attacked during this, and Devin, they say they're still pretty shaken up, and this was two years ago. Yeah, and you'll hear why, you know, their account of being beaten with a baton and why it's still so fresh in their mind. Yeah, that two years later, and they say the only safe place they feel right now is at home. Two years later, the pain is still there. It's awful. Unfortunately, um, there's a lot of panic and um, 
anxiety that I have that I never had before. Andrew and Kelly Carrado wanted to enjoy a day at the city's newest beach. When they showed up, police told them to keep clear of an abrasive couple that they had received calls about. The Corrados went and found a spot near Poets Beach and came in contact with this man, Jonathan Rance, a known transient living in a tent nearby. He came down and just said, hey, I noticed your dog's off leash. Ours is pretty protective, so if you can just keep him down by the water with you, that'd be great. A couple hours later, Rance became agitated and took his anger out on Andrew first. Backing Andrew into the water past his knees, he struck him in the shoulder with a baton and started throwing rocks at him. And then things turned even more violent. Kel went over to say something to him or to get him to calm down, and he lifted her up with both hands and chucked her about 10 feet onto the rocks. With Andrew in the water, Rance went after Kelly, splitting her head open with a baton. What's going through her mind at that moment is unimaginable. That I was the only person in the world, that there was nobody there, and that he was going to kill me. that I was going to die. She screamed and eventually Rance ran off. The lawsuit filed in federal court says the city should have done more to protect them. The couple says the police knew about the problems with Rance and did nothing to remove him from the area. God. Now the Corrados want change. The status quo isn't OK. Change right now is what needs to happen. and. Portland doesn't need more bike paths and garbage cans in downtown Portland. Portland needs, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the answer is, but not coming up with an answer isn't an option. As far as Rance, he was arrested a short time later uh, in 2017 and sentenced to five years in jail for that assault. We contacted Portland police and the mayor's office to see if uh, they had any comment about this pending lawsuit and what was done at that time. Portland police wouldn't comment and an email sent to the mayor's office wasn't returned. The couple is seeking a million dollars in damages. Back to you. Thank you, Devin. We are a day away from a very contentious proposal some neighborhood associations fear could cost them their voice in community affairs. KGW's Joe Ranieri joins us from the newsroom now. And Joe, people you talk to are really worried about this potential change. They really are, Laurel. They fear they won't have a say anymore when it comes to changes in their neighborhood. Now, despite city officials saying there won't be much change, they're still worried about what might happen tomorrow night. Janet Hawkins has been a resident of the Hayhurst neighborhood in southwest Portland for more than a decade. The Southwest Community Center is one of the neighborhood landmarks. Hawkins is concerned about proposed changes to the city code and how it recognizes neighborhood associations. It looks as though there's some positives reflected in there. There's aspirations toward uh, greater inclusion, involvement, uh, more participation in terms of civic engagement. I think those are all commendable things to have in the code. Other residents like Elizabeth Deal, who lives in Northeast Portland and is part of the King Neighborhood Association, worry about the city eliminating the word neighborhood associations from the current city code. They say the proposal would change the way they work with the city, especially when it comes to zoning laws. By not giving us a recognized seat at the table, I feel it does water down what we can do. City Commissioner Chloe Udaley released this statement on her Facebook page saying, there is misinformation out there and they have no plans on to dismantle the neighborhood association system. This weekend, concerns started to boil over. She was trying to calm those concerns when residents started asking her specifics about what the proposal was going to look like. When residents asked if she could answer questions they had, she said this before walking out. With the concern residents like Hawkins have ahead of Thursday night's vote, she's hoping there still can be a little more transparency. We'd like to see a delay in that council meeting so that there could be greater public involvement. Now that meeting is scheduled for tomorrow night at 530 and goes until 830 at the Portland Water Bureau in North Portland. Now, despite it not being a public forum, city officials told me they are going to have five minutes of testimony. Back to you. All right, Joe, appreciate that. Thank you for the update. I want to tell you about some promising new research this week on Alzheimer's. It's coming out of an Alzheimer's conference this week in L.A. It's helping us better understand the disease. 
and some of our own local researchers are there today. KGW's Brittany Falkers joins us now with what this means for the millions of people affected by this disease. Yeah, really so many people are affected by this disease from the people who are living with it to the family who are caring for their loved ones. In fact, one in 10 Americans 65 and older has Alzheimer's dementia, but this new research is offering more hope for a better understanding of a really complicated condition. I, I'm terrified. I am the next generation. The crushing grip of Alzheimer's disease is something Jennifer Cook Buman knows all too well. My dad passed away four years ago at age 74 uh, from Alzheimer's and his younger brother just turned 70 last week and is well on his own journey with the disease. This week, 25 Oregon researchers are joining nearly 6,000 attendees at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference in Los Angeles. New research reveals some biological clues as to why women may be more likely than men to develop the disease. Another shows doctors may one day be able to diagnose Alzheimer's with a blood test. And program director for our local chapter of the Alzheimer's Association, Heidi Rawls, says it could be a game changer. And it gives them that much more time to plan, um, to make a plan about what they want to do with their finances, what they want to do for their care. They can really speak up while they still have that autonomy and they still have the cognitive skills to be able to do so. She's also excited about new research that suggests adopting healthy lifestyle habits like daily exercise can offset genetic and environmental risks. For so long we, t we have told everyone that there is absolutely nothing that we can do about Alzheimer's disease and there's nothing to prevent it, treat it, slow it, cure it. And so now we're being able to talk about lifestyle factors and giving people that sense of maybe there is something I can do. 5.8 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's disease. And if you don't think it affects you, think again. In 2019, the direct cost to Americans in caring for those with Alzheimer's and dementia is $290 billion. This year, for Medicare and Medicaid, it'll cost $195 billion. That's 67 percent of total costs. And as our population continues to age, those needs and expenses will only continue to grow. Oh, every single taxpayer is touched. They, they don't even realize <laughs> that they are impacted because it is expensive. And while those who are already diagnosed may not fully benefit from the new research we're seeing this week, it's giving people like Jennifer optimism for the future. For the family members, yes. I mean, I'm 52, so I'm about 15 years behind my family's typical diagnosis age. I am very hopeful. Now, to learn more about these studies and for local resources, including the 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's, check out this story on our mobile app or on KGW.com. And remember, the Walk to End Alzheimer's Portland is actually coming up this next month on August 24th. Back to you. Good reminder. Sure Thanks, Brittany. Thank you.